I'm going to be talking to you today about why I am not vegan. That's right, an animal lover who is not vegan. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a response video that we have had so many requests for. We've not had this many requests for a video in a long time, so we had to make it. Yes, absolutely. So today we're responding to M from the channel Mzotic, and she put out a video recently called Why I'm Not Vegan. Yes, you can eat meat and still love animals. Okay. All right. A lot to respond to there. We're going to so, go there. <laughs> so M has 280,000 subscribers to her channel. She's very passionate about animals. Mm -hmm. She attracts an audience that's very passionate about animals. And she's surrounded by animals in her videos, as you'll see. Yeah, and that's because M is an animal educator. So basically, she kind of works with a company that takes animals to uh, schools and other various locations and gives presentations whilst using the animals. And uh, they can also use the animals on like film sets or um, television shows. So to us, it's kind of like a mobile zoo. And we'll link a video in the description below this video as to why zoos aren't educational. From the onset, we will say that Em has made some really good changes to her diet and she is open to moving towards more of a plant-based diet, which is really good to hear. That's right. And yet at the same time, she's still very passionate about the idea that she can love animals while still paying people to kill others so that she can eat them and their secretions. And she speaks from a very anthropocentric perspective. That is, as if the humans are central and the most important part of existence, especially when uh, considering other animals. And so we're here as voices for those innocent victims, the animals, who can't speak for themselves. Yeah, because we felt like the animals perspective was missing from her video, from her conversation. So we're just going to kind of slide in there and provide that perspective. Yeah. And when we were reading the comments below M's video, we could see that she was reinforcing this anthropocentric perspective that many people have. Yeah. Basically telling them good things about their bad habits. She's telling them what they want to hear. Yes, I can still call myself an animal lover, but I can still eat them. As we said, M is very passionate about this topic. And as you'll see towards the end of her video, she gets particularly impassioned. Yeah. So you may see the same impassioned response from us on behalf of the animals. Absolutely. And M, this is not a hate video. This is not a bully video or, you know, the things that people like to say about vegans. We're simply responding with as much passion as you did. Now, M's video was 20 minutes long, yeah. so we can't respond to every single minute of it. So we're just going to respond to key excerpts. But I feel that animal lovers who do eat meat are somewhat forced into the dark in recent years. And that's because that mentality sounds like it comes from the dark ages. I mean, it's 2018. Who is still eating animals? Why are we still eating animals when we know so much? That's right. And vegans aren't forcing meat eaters into the dark. Meat eaters are choosing to remain in the dark yeah. after seeing what vegans are sharing on social media about animal rights. And these things were previously kept hidden from us, yes. from all of us, by industry intentionally because industry knows that if we see how our food is produced and it's not food, it's violence, we wouldn't buy it. And I don't like the fact that they're picked on and made to be thought to be evil or that their love for animals is any less than someone who is vegan. Love and killing. Polar opposites. On the emotional spectrum. So they're yeah. mutually exclusive. They can't be experienced simultaneously. No, we're not killing someone out of love. It's not like they're suffering. It's not like they're sick. This is not euthanasia. No. This is choosing to unnecessarily take the life of an innocent being who does not want to die. There is no loving act in that decision. It's the animals that are being picked on. Yeah. The things that are done to animals are in fact evil. We're not saying that meat eaters are evil. Mm -hmm. Good people do bad things. We were once meat eaters as well and didn't know any different. Mm. It's the action that's evil. And nobody can make you feel anything. If you're choosing to feel that way, it's perhaps because vegans are exposing cognitive dissonance in meat eaters and you're having a battle of conscience. So I really love animals, every single animal. I have dedicated my entire life to the study of animals, to learning about them, traveling and exploring the relationship between man, animal and food in a lot of different countries. The relationship between man, animals and food is that seven and a half billion of us 
slaughter 60 billion land animals and 2.7 trillion marine animals every single year for food alone worldwide. That's the relationship. Now the thing is, you don't have to be an animal lover to be vegan. You don't even have to technically like animals. All you have to do is realize that unnecessarily taking someone's life who doesn't want to die is wrong. We have no doubt that Em knows more about animals than we ever will in our lifetime. She knows more about animals and has interacted more with animals than most people on the planet. That's amazing. But you don't need to have that intimate relationship with another being to know that killing them and eating them is wrong. So it's not about, oh, I love animals so much. It's about just acknowledging that they have a right to their life and they have a purpose that is not for us. And it's important for me to experiment for my own health because I have a lot of restrictions. A lot of restrictions. Number one, I am allergic to eggs. So anything with egg in it, if it's fresh egg, um, then I can't eat it. Yes, that extends to cakes and brownies and things like that too. I'm also severely allergic to egg whites. So no meringues for Emma. Veganism is not about dietary restrictions. With veganism, we give up nothing. We simply stop taking that which is not ours. And it's not a big deal that you're allergic to eggs. That's a really good thing because you can still eat all of the foods that you just mentioned in the vegan version. You can still have cakes and cookies and uh, even meringue you can make with chickpea uh, juice. So There's even a vegan egg. Yeah, no problem. I'm also severely allergic to fish. Anything to do with seafood, I cannot eat it. Me too. I've been severely allergic to all seafood since I was, I think, about two years old. Straight to the hospital, I could die. Easy. Take that off your list. And it's not seafood, it's sea life. Yes. I'm also allergic to almonds, but not other nuts yet. Okay, so you don't have to eat almonds as a vegan. You don't have to eat any nuts as a vegan. There are plenty of other plant foods that you can choose from. There are lots of vegans who have food allergies, including nuts. Not a problem. Uh, cherries, peaches. Not essential in order to eat a vegan diet. No, in fact, we haven't had cherries and peaches for a very long time because they're very expensive. <laughs> oh, I just bloat loads when I eat bread. So anything that's very carb heavy, I bloat for like three days badly. Again, you don't have to eat bread in order to eat a vegan diet. Yeah, and that's likely to be the gluten. So you could simply choose a gluten-free vegan diet, which many people do eat. So if they're the dietary restrictions that you have in, they're really not that big of a deal and it's not a problem to have those restrictions and still be vegan. I am predominantly vegetarian, meaning that the bulk of my food that I eat is vegetarian. That's a good first step but I'm not strict on it. So if I really feel the need to have some extra protein and protein from plants is just not cutting it out for me, then I will have a little bit of chicken. Are you a bodybuilder, Em? Are you training to be a bodybuilder? Are you an athlete? There are plenty of vegan athletes and bodybuilders that get plenty of protein. So if they can do it, then the rest of us can do it as well. That's right. I mean, the animals you're eating, after all, are getting their protein from yes. plants. So why don't we bypass the animals and go direct to the source? Plants have all the protein that we require. And in fact, our requirements for protein are a lot smaller than we think they are. That's right. According to the World Health Organization, we only require about 0.81 grams per kilogram of body weight of protein, which works out to around about roughly 10% of our total daily calories. Yes. So plant foods have us covered. And if we think about the largest animals on the planet, elephants, rhinos, gorillas, they all eat a plant-based diet. And when people say they don't feel like they're getting enough protein on a plant-based diet, that's usually because they're not eating enough calories. So it's more likely a calorie deficiency rather than a protein deficiency. Meat-wise, pork is a no-no for me. I am physically and mentally repulsed by the thought of pork. Duck, I'm not a fan of either. Um, lamb, I won't eat. Uh, beef, I will eat very seldomly. Okay, it's not beef, it's a cow. Yeah. And you know, you've got to be aware of these euphemisms that mm. we use to disconnect ourselves from the actual animal we're eating. Yes, and it is so interesting. Why pick some and not others? What's wrong with eating pigs? It's very arbitrary, isn't it? You know, it just where do we draw that line and why do we draw that line? That's what we need to think about. Vegans are saying the line is that we leave all the animals, yeah. all of them, to their own purposes and that's it. 
country wise i think the us unfortunately falls behind a lot of the rest of the world when it comes to the health and quality of meat um so i don't touch beef over here but if i go to the uk or any other european countries then i might have a burger when it comes to the health of meat whether it's produced in europe or the united states or anywhere in the world it all still contains artery clogging saturated fat and cholesterol that causes our number one cause of death heart disease and the World Health Organization, when they classified red meat as a probable carcinogen, didn't make a distinction between beef coming out of Europe and beef coming out of America. I try and have as little dairy as possible. I do not drink milk. Um, if uh, like cow's milk kind of repulses me because I know the process of producing it and it is just packed full of stuff that I do not want in my body. Okay, so that's really good that she knows the process behind dairy and that she's aware that this is not good to put into our bodies. Also, the process of what happens to the cows is what should repulse you even more. Uh, we will link videos down below that show exactly how cows are forcibly impregnated, have their baby stolen from them, and are milked to excess and eventually all slaughtered for hamburger meat. Some of these dairy cows, these mothers, go to the slaughterhouse still pregnant, so they will have their throat slit, their belly cut open, and out comes their baby. That's, That's repulsive. Yeah. I like coconut milk um, and I also like cashew milk. Good. Excellent, that's really good. But I do cave on occasion and have ice cream. Um, I have tried vegan and vegetarian ice creams, but just they just weren't the same for me. I love a really good gelato. It's one of my few genuine food pleasures in life. Just like non-vegan ice cream and gelato, the vegan versions of ice cream and gelato come in many different brands and varieties. So you really do have to experiment to find the one that you like. You have to try a number of them. And it's very important that people understand that our taste buds, our sensory pleasure is not worth somebody's life. Her life means more to her than our taste. And we shouldn't be finding pleasure in consuming something that comes from an extraordinary amount of pain and suffering. Again, we should be repulsed. Um, chocolate again, good chocolate I can't really say no to. You can have vegan chocolate, it comes in many different brands and varieties just like non-vegan chocolate. So once again, you need to try quite a number of them to find which ones you like the best. And once again, our taste buds do not justify the unnecessary murder of another innocent being. And yes, all dairy cows are ultimately killed for their meat and baby male dairy calves are killed. So you can't have dairy without killing. Um, I know it's, it's just a curse and that's why I have these thighs that I have. All right, well, I'm glad that she acknowledges that dairy does promote weight gain because it is baby cow growth formula. It's designed to make the little calf grow very, very big. So when we consume dairy, that's what happens to us. It's not a slimming product. It's only going to make us gain. And cheese, I am having a difficult time in cutting down on. I have made basically the switch to only eating white cheeses, so I'm not having cheddars and things like that. I like having feta, mozzarella. Um, that's just like a personal taste thing. Again, personal taste does not justify the enslavement and the abuse and the ultimate murder of innocent beings. And the reason a lot of people have difficulty giving up cheese is because we're actually physically addicted to it. Cow's milk contains what are called casomorphins, which are opiate-like substances that keep the calf coming back to the mother to suckle to ensure that it grows for its survival. And uh, these casomorphins are concentrated in cheese because it takes a lot of milk to make cheese. So that's what causes that physical addiction in us. So the best way is to try a number of different vegan cheeses. Yes. See which ones you like. Yeah, and also, you know, she mentioned, oh, she's having this cheese and not that cheese. It doesn't matter what the color of the cheese is, what animal it comes from, what the type of cheese is. It's all the same process of what happens to the animals. And that's the most important thing that we need to remind ourselves. Exactly. And secondarily, it also still contains artery clogging, yes. saturated fat and cholesterol, which leads to our number one cause of death, heart disease. So we're killing the animals and we're killing ourselves. Um, I have tried, like I said, a lot of vegan cheeses. Just, I just don't like them. To me, it's just not the same. It doesn't matter if it's not the same. Again, there are more important things than your taste buds. Again, this anthropocentric perspective. You know, to, what kind of attitude is that? We are talking about the most horrific industry on the planet. The dairy industry will be the first to go because talking about keeping things in the dark, Vegan activists have been shining the light on this horrific industry. It is worse than the meat industry. That is how, but dairy will 
drop first. Yeah. It, because it, all dairy ultimately involves killing, but the suffering is prolonged when compared to the meat yeah. industry. So I'm trying to make that move to cutting down on my dairy still because I just know it's not good for me. Um, and I know the process of producing it, which I, I don't like either. Okay, so this is really good. Em has the education. She knows the process of dairy. She knows it's not good for her body. These are good things. What's frustrating is that she's still consuming these products. Cutting down is fantastic, but Em, what's going to make it a lot easier for you is to drop those dairy products altogether and replace them with vegan products. Yeah. Now, the taste buds take about 21 days to change over so if you're still putting dairy into your body your taste buds are still going to want that if you drop the dairy products and just give the taste buds 21 days to get used to to adjust to vegan alternatives that's right because like we said before dairy is physically addictive yes. just like any other addictive substance like uh, nicotine in uh, cigarettes for example yeah. so if a smoker tries to quit smoking but continues to smoke every time they have a cigarette it's feeding that addiction same thing with dairy products because you see i'm not entirely unconflicted i still have genuine conflicts in my head when it comes to what i consume so i'm not just like i will never be vegetarian or never be vegan because it's not like that i'm constantly evolving and constantly changing this is really good to hear yeah it and means that in your heart you know what's right yeah because if there was nothing wrong with what you're currently doing then you wouldn't be conflicted and it's not what you're eating it's who you're eating we always have to think of that individual victim so i know what you're thinking m come on how can you be a meat eater and still claim to love animals to me that's simple because life is about balance give a little take a little and what does a chicken take from you when have the animals ever taken anything from us all we do is take their lives and their lives are the only things that they have so we take everything from them whilst they take nothing from us how is that balance as humans we are going to take from animals whether we like it or not even vegans you know just simply by existing on this planet we clear a mass amount of land to build cities and houses and you know we cause damage to animals and the environment simply by existing the least we can do the way we can create that balance that you're talking about em is by not killing animals unnecessarily to eat them that's how we give back that's how we create the balance we go vegan. Many years ago, we had an important conversation with a lifelong vegetarian about the cruelty and violence in the dairy industry. And she had a lot of trouble kind of connecting with what we were saying. But during that conversation, she revealed to us that she was a victim of domestic violence for a lot, long period of her life. It was very bad. I think she was in hospital. She almost died at one point. Terrible, terrible situation. And the way we finally got through to her, what clicked for her, what made her understand what we were saying, and this is why we're sharing this story, is because we said to her that thinking you can still love animals whilst eating their bodies or their secretions is like a husband who beats his wife, but then says, I love you, I'm sorry. It's a violent action with the words of, I still love you. They don't marry up. And even if that husband only, only beat the woman once a week or once a month or once a year, it's still violence and she's still a victim and it's still not okay. And his words of, but I love you for all the other times when I'm not beating you up, do they really hold any ground? Can we really love someone and hurt them at the same time? And this is what helped her make the connection understand that you can't love animals and also cause them pain and suffering and be violent towards them and that's how she went vegan i genuinely don't believe in a cruelty free existence i don't think that it's achievable nor we do totally we just agree with you. said that just by yes. our very existence as human beings on this planet yeah. we are going to cause cruelty to other life forms yes but veganism is not about being perfect it's not about saying that we are cruelty free and we cause no harm to any other that's people. right the definition no. of veganism doesn't include the words cruelty free it says not using animals for food clothing entertainment or any other purpose as far as possible and practicable and for most people on the planet certainly for you em us and the people watching it is possible and practicable to not put animals in our mouths
So to me, if I went vegan in diet today, I would still be contributing to the meat market because I keep carnivores and I need to go to people who mass produce animals because these are the people who supply pet stores. So even by just keeping animals, I am contributing to the slaughter, mass slaughter of, of B grade animals. So this is an appeal to futility fallacy. Basically, Em is saying, I can't do everything, therefore I won't do anything. And she is doing something, you know. She has made positive changes to her diet, but just because you have carnivorous animals that you need to care for, doesn't mean that you also need to eat animal flesh and their secretions. They're two different things here. We don't need to confuse the two. That's right. Remember, it's as far as possible and practicable. Yeah. So well, for your putting... look at carnivorous animals under your care, yeah. then it's not possible to feed them a vegan diet. But you are not an obligate carnivore. You're a herbivore. Physiologically, anatomically, biochemically, you're a herbivore. Therefore, you, it is possible and practicable and actually for your health necessary yes. not to eat animal products and their secretion. If I went vegan today, I would still be paying tax in a country which clears forests in order to grow more mass-produced meat. Again, back to the definition of veganism, as far as possible and practicable. Now, tax, we are legally required to pay. So it's not possible and practicable, unless we want to go to jail for tax evasion, to not pay tax. So all vegans have to pay tax, but that falls under the definition of veganism. Mm. That still doesn't justify you eating animals and their secretions. If I went vegan today, I would still be contributing to companies who flatten hundreds and hundreds of acres a day in the rainforests around the world in order to make soy plantations. And those soy plantations are not to make tofu burgers for vegans, unfortunately. They are to be fed to animals to fatten them up so we can slaughter their bodies and eat their meat. And even if your obligate carnivorous pets under your care have to be fed those animal products, you don't have to contribute to it further by consuming them yourself when you don't need to. Carnivorous or vegan, we can absolutely all live together and we don't necessarily have to be at each other's throats. You just have to understand that everybody has to make their own choices. Let's just try and be as peaceful as we can with each other. So many things wrong with this statement, Em, I'm sorry. Peace begins on our plate, so we can't even have a discussion about peace while we're still but we're still thinking that it is justifiable to take the life of an innocent being who doesn't want to die when it's not necessary. And you that's not a peaceful action. That's right, and you think we're at each other's throats because we're exchanging words impassionately? What's at throats are the knives that are slitting the throats as of 60 billion land animals and 2.7 trillion marine animals every single year unnecessarily. That's what's at throats. And you have to understand that this is not a personal choice. Personal choice is something that affects only you. Whatever color shirt I decide to wear, how I decide to style my hair, that is a personal choice. But when a choice affects someone beyond the self, that is no longer personal. So when our actions affect other beings, other lives, the planet that we collectively live on, that's no longer a personal choice. But it's not always practical to be vegan. Some people can't afford to be vegan. Being vegan can actually cost a lot of money, as can vegetarianism. Some families just can't afford it. A vegan diet can be as expensive or as cheap as you choose to make it, just like a non-vegan diet can be as expensive or as cheap as you choose to make it. For example, we eat a predominantly whole foods vegan diet because that's the only vegan diet that we can afford to eat. It's and the cheapest diet <laughs> on the planet. We're talking about fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, and some nuts and seeds. It's often referred to as a peasant diet because it's eaten by the world's poorest people. Mm. You want to compare prices of uh, steak to legumes or potatoes or rice, they are the cheapest calories on the planet. And you know what, Em, it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing, what families can or can't afford, it's what you're doing and what you can afford. And we're sure that you can afford rice and potatoes and legumes and fruit and vegetables. And we're going to link some videos in the description below about how to eat vegan on $3 a day, $4 a day, cheap as chips. Literally. <laughs> To me, in an ideal world, people wouldn't be at each other's throats about their diet, but people would certainly, in my ideal world, consume far less meat than they do consume. Again, Em, your words, in my ideal world, mm. this very anthropocentric perspective, this speciesist perspective, once again, 
What about the ideal world of the animals? In their ideal world, I'm pretty sure that they would like to be left to their own purposes, free of human intervention, and certainly not have knives slitting their throats mm, every second of every day. It doesn't matter if it's one or if it's one million. To that animal who is being slaughtered, their life matters. Yes, eating less meat is a good thing, but we can't stop at the idea of just eating less meat is enough. It's not enough. Animals will still be killed. People's health will still suffer, yes. people will still die unnecessarily, and the environment will still continue to be disrupted by the animal agriculture industry. And in an ideal world, people would be having this conversation and we would be holding other people accountable for the unnecessary slaughter of innocent animals. For example, I have two friends who are amazing. I think they're an incredible inspiration. And although they are meat eaters, they've actually decided to hunt for their own meat. Who does that? <laughs> I mean, people talk about veganism being impractical and expensive and not possible for everyone. Who is going to hunt their own stag? No, people don't not... even have time. Some people don't even have time to go to the supermarket to buy food to cook themselves. And that's why we have fast food chains. And now you think people are going to go and hunt their own food? And it's not... That's ridiculous. That's right. And it's not their own meat. Their own meat <laughs> is right. the flesh on their own body. That flesh belongs to another animal who didn't want to die and doesn't have to die because we're not obligate carnivores. We don't have to do eat them. I think they kill one or two stags at most a year themselves so they actually know where the foods come from, they've sourced it and they use that meat throughout the entire year. They've actually chosen a specimen who is likely already reproduced, um, you know, fulfilled their circle of life and they are going to be nourished by the same animal for a whole year. A specimen? We're talking about someone's life, an individual. It's not a specimen. It's not something that's like in a museum. Mm. This is someone who matters to them and to their families. Again, put yourself in the victim's position. So imagine aliens who were more technologically advanced than us visited Earth and called human beings specimens and said, oh, you've reproduced, so you've fulfilled your circle it's of life. It's a So I'm morally yeah. entitled to eat you. You know, you're, you're that wouldn't essentially... hold up for you in that instance, no. so if it, it does with animals, then you're creating a double standard here. And that's what cognitive dissonance is about. And this is why you're feeling attacked and made to feel evil and uncomfortable and you're getting all impassioned about it because you're being hypocritical and you're holding a double standard. And fulfilling the circle of life is not shooting an animal in the head. If that animal has died of natural causes and you're walking through the forest and you find that animal there and you want to eat him or her, that's your choice, that's fine. If you wanna eat roadkill, no problem. But shooting someone in the head is not circle of life, that's murder. And if you disagree with this, all you have to do is put yourself in the victim's position. So instead of killing so many hundreds of thousands of different animals a year to, to feed yourself, they only take one or two animals, which is pretty incredible. You know what's pretty incredible? not unnecessarily taking any lives. That's what's pretty incredible. And what's pretty incredible is also making a video to try to justify killing other sentient beings. When That's incredible not in 2017. It's not how many beings are killed. It's the act of killing in and of itself that is the problem. And that can never be incredible when it's taking someone's life who doesn't want to die and it's unnecessary action. That's right. Now, we would never look at a murderer who just murders one person and say, oh, that was incredible. They could have murdered 10 people. Yeah, they could have been a mass murderer, but they didn't kill 10. They only killed one. So See how the it. argument doesn't hold up as soon as we change the species. Imagine the waste that would be reduced in the world if people cut down on the amount of meat that they actually consumed. I know I'm only purchasing a tiny amount from sustainable sources, good farmers, who only produce what is required of them to produce. There's no waste. <sighs> this word sustainable has been hijacked by the meat, dairy and egg industries in order to make us feel good about our bad habits. Because makes us feel comfortable. That's like right. I'm not doing anything wrong. It's sustainable. Yeah. It's because actually good for the planet. That's right. When in actual fact, grass-fed, free-range animals are actually less sustainable yeah. than animals from factory farms because they require more land and if they're being grass-fed, it's going to take them longer to reach market weight, thus increasing their global greenhouse gas emissions and the destruction of the environment. And what does good farms mean? 
because all these animals ultimately have the same end. They all go to the slaughterhouse, they're all hung upside down from the ankle, they all have their throats slit and they bleed out. We can assure you the good farms aren't killing these animals with hugs and kisses. No. They all meet the same fate. And I tell you what, we actually listened to a speech from a former slaughterhouse worker recently and he said that when the animals came in, the ones that came from these free-range grass-fed you know, good farms, they were the ones that were most stressed and most terrified because they hadn't experienced this kind of, um, you know, terrible conditions their whole lives. They'd had a good out in the pastures. They were freaking out. So actually, actually, it's the ultimate betrayal yes. for those animals. Ultimately, nothing humane happens in a slaughterhouse. It's a house of slaughter. It doesn't matter what the farm is. It doesn't matter how the animals were treated. At the end of the day, they all have the same end. And that's what we need to be focusing on. Slaughter and humane are oxymoronic. They are mutually exclusive terms, just like loving animals and killing animals are mutually exclusive. In the time that I've been on YouTube, nobody has come after my neck and been as horrible and as nasty to me and as personal in, in trying to get to me and to hurt me as diehard vegans. Again, Em, no one is literally coming for your throat and yet when you pay people to kill animals for their flesh and their secretions, those animals are actually having their throats come out yeah. with a knife. Yeah. Now, of course, we haven't read the comments that Amy's talking about, so we can't speak on behalf of these people that are leaving these kind of comments. What I can say, Em, is that vegans are very passionate about why we've made this lifestyle change. And, and when, you, when you take the red pill and you really wake up and you make that connection, you realize the sense of urgency that we are talking about trillions of lives as we keep saying we're talking about the planet that we collectively live on we are running out of time and when we see people on youtube with such incredible following and uh, influence. influence you know you have influence and you're promoting this idea that you can love someone and kill them vegans are going it's... to call out your hypocrisy and your double standards yeah because this is not a game this is someone's life it's a matter of life and death so it may seem like we're kind of a little bit more, what's the word? Well, I think we're equally as impassioned as M is, mm. except that we're on the morally right side. Defending that, Defending lives. animals, whereas you're on the morally wrong side trying to justify taking lives. Yeah. Now, I know that they are the minority, and I've come to think of these types of vegans as a kind of religious extremism, because to them, they, they seem to wake up and come after me like it's some kind of mission to convert me to their belief. And to me, that's religion. That's not a lifestyle choice. That, to me, is trying to force a kind of religious thinking down my neck. So, a, a protesters who are protesting against the Yule and Dog Festival, are they religious extremists? Are they militant dog lovers or are they simply good people who recognize injustice and are speaking up against that injustice? If you're telling your viewers who absolutely adore you, we saw it in the comments, that it's okay for them to continue eating animals and they can still be an animal lover, that is working against everything that vegans are trying to do in this movement. We're trying to save animals and you're telling people it's okay to keep eating them just in the right circumstances. Make sure they're from this farm and not that farm. And you consider these vegans nasty and extremists and religious and cultish because they're calling out behaviors that you're undertaking. I have a lot of friends who are either vegetarian or vegan and they're super respectful of anybody. The action of unnecessarily taking someone's life who doesn't want to die is not something to be respected. That is not a good thing that we should be upholding. What you're saying, Em, is that the only good vegan is a silent vegan. The problem with silence is silence is consent. So for example, let's say you see somebody beating a dog in the street. You've got three choices. You can join in and beat the dog with that other person. That's a meat eater. Or you can simply say, I'm not going to beat the dog and stand by and watch the person beating the dog. That's an apologetic vegan or, or a, a silent, silent vegan. vegan. Uh, the third choice is the morally right choice to make, which is to try to intervene and get the person to stop beating the dog. Is it not? That's a vegan who speaks up. That's a vegan activist. That is someone who says, hey, that's not right. Stop it. Okay. 
There so are we, can, going we, to... we can all understand that when we use the example of a dog, yeah. because dogs we typically love and consider members of our families. But as soon as we, you know, if I'd used a pig or a, a cow or a chicken or a turkey or a duck or another food animal, um, all of a sudden, you know. Mm. And if all of these things to those food animals were happening in public, we would intervene because everyone is against animal, animal abuse except when it happens behind closed doors That's in a right. slaughterhouse and then we can eat their bodies because that, that just it's cognitive dissonance this is what we're trying to express here they don't look at meat eaters and go i would never touch that did you know no 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 we think this is a bit of a stereotype because the vast majority of vegans were previously meat eaters themselves you know we were all raised in this culture that thinks it's normal natural and necessary to eat animals so it's not that we would never touch that we have touched that we've all eaten that we know what that's like but once you know better you have a moral responsibility to do better and to also inform others of the benefits of going vegan and the negative effects of remaining non-vegan I just want people to be peaceful once again peace begins on our plates how can we talk about being peaceful when we have innocent animals most of them are actually babies slaughtered unnecessarily for our taste. That's it. There is no moral justification for it. Everybody has completely different lives. You don't know everybody's individual circumstance. And unless you literally put yourself in that person's life, you don't know their circumstance. You don't need to know every individual's circumstances. All we need to know is that we're physiologically, anatomically, and biochemically herbivores, and therefore we don't need to eat animals at all their secretions in order to survive. Therefore, we shouldn't. That's right. And how about we put ourselves in the shoes of the victims? That's the most important position to put ourselves in as the animals if this was happening to us would it be okay would you ever in any of the scenarios and circumstances that you're um, suggesting are a good thing would that be okay if it was you being killed and if the answer is no then it's not okay to do it to an animal now talk about being in other people's uh, shoes okay again the vast majority of vegans were raised eating animals. So we have been in the shoes of meat eaters or vegetarians, okay? We once, uh, you know, really harshly criticized and virtually bullied a vegetarian as meat eaters. That's right. We used to go to zoos and say that we love animals, but, you know, we're animal lovers, but we would pay for the enslavement of other animals uh, for our entertainment. We've been in that position. We have been hypocrites. We even remember, as meat eaters, having a conversation with these environmental hunters, exactly like the type of people that you were just describing, Em, who killed their own food. Um, and we were defending the animals. We were saying that this is wrong and you shouldn't be a hunter. But we were still meat eaters, you know, cognitive dissonance. So we've, we've been the hypocrites it. too, that's yes. the point. And, and once you make that connection and see what is coming out of my mouth sounds so ridiculous once you understand. From the victim's point of view. All that hypocrisy breaks down and then you get it and then you go vegan. As long as you're a good person, if you're respectful of others, I don't care one way or another what you put in your mouth to eat. You eat what you want to eat. It's not what you want to eat, it's who you are eating first of all. And again, good people do bad things. But once you're made aware of those bad things, then you have a moral responsibility to change your behavior. That's what good people do. And there is nothing, nothing to respect about the action of taking someone else's life when it's not necessary. That's the key message of this video. And again, most of these animals that we are eating for food are babies. You think it's a respectful action to kill a baby? There's no need. If I came in and killed your snake right now, you wouldn't respect me. And I wouldn't expect that you would respect me because I've just taken a life unnecessarily. And don't let anybody diet shame you. You know, diet shaming is a thing now. Veganism is not a diet. Oh. It is a way of life that seeks to exclude as far as possible and practicable the use of animals for food, clothing, entertainment or any other purpose. That is not a diet. Using and exploiting animals for any reason, whether it's wearing fur or 
Drinking milk is a shameful action and we should not make people comfortable with this action. It is a good thing to shame that action. That's how we create awareness and change. If people feel comfortable and okay and respected about killing animals, we're back in the dark ages. Whether you enjoy eating meat, whether you hunt for your own meat, whether you will never touch a meat product in your life, as long as we're all respectful, I am more than happy to be chill with absolutely everybody. Again. This is not a social club. We're talking about what happens at a slaughterhouse. And again, nothing humane happens when we chop someone's head off and there's nothing to be respected about the action of chopping someone's head off or paying someone else to chop an innocent animal's head off for you so you can eat that body. M's perspective is very much one of each to their own, isn't it? Yeah. The problem is you don't live on planet M. We all live collectively on one planet. So your everybody's actions affect the lives yes. of everybody else. When you contribute to the animal agriculture industry by buying meat, dairy and eggs, you're contributing to the destruction of the environment of the planet that we all live on. When you buy meat, dairy and eggs, which are scientifically linked to 14 of the 15 leading causes of death, you're contributing to the rising cost of health care, which everybody's taxes have to pay for. So therefore you can see that buying animal products is not a personal choice. Although I'm slowly making those steps there in that natural direction, I kind of feel that, that that dietary veganism is a given for me in the future. Even if I did it, I would never tell anyone. But it's not really in my business to say to anybody else what they put in their mouths or not, or to have influence over people as to what they eat. As we just explained, everyone's diet is everyone's business. And you already have an influence, Em. You're already telling people that it's okay to love animals and kill them. You're already giving that message that the two things can, can go together. You're having that influence on people. We were horrified by reading the comments left under your video that people thought it was okay, that they were justifying their behavior, their actions. Because you were giving them the green light to do so. Even if you are a meat eater and you keep animals or anything else, of course, of course, you can be an animal lover. I don't think that things are that black and white. But Em, you're the oppressor, you're the perpetrator, you're the taker of life. So it's convenient for you to have gray areas. But to the victim, it is black and white. It is a matter of life and death. And if you were the victim, it would be black and white to you as well. So please don't allow anyone to bully you into thinking that you are any less an animal lover because you eat meat or because you don't or anything else. You are your own individual person. Own it. The animals are the ones being bullied. A few words exchanged online to raise awareness for animals, that's not bullying. What's bullying is what's done in the factory farms and the slaughterhouses. Again, it's not a personal choice. You don't live on your own individual planet and you're talking about someone else's life. Own it. Own the action of slaughtering innocent animals and destroying the planet, you want to own that? That is not a respectful action once again. That is not something to be proud of. That is not a loving action. If I'm racist, should I own racism? If I'm sexist, should I own sexism? Why should we own speciesism? It's just another form of discrimination and it shouldn't be owned, it should be eradicated. All right, guys, that is our impassioned ending to responding to M's impassioned video. Lots of passion going around, lots of ideas. Again, if you were the victim, you would want to be spoken for yeah. as passionately as we've spoken for the victims as well. We just try and keep it really, really simple. I think as human beings, we like to talk a lot. We like to throw around a lot of words and ideas and... Which is easy to do from our anthropocentric speciesist perspective. Yes, I just want everybody... To empathize. ...questioning this, to imagine themselves hanging upside down, and bleeding out. If it was your life, the whole thing changes. So, we're gonna link a host of resources in the description below this video, yes. as we all do, as we do always, because it's all about education. Yes. We're just talking about things that we once previously didn't know about yes. and now know about and have a moral responsibility to share with others. That's what we're here to do That's on YouTube. Right. Please share this video with M and leave your comments down below. Please be respectful of M, no hate. No super nasty words, just... Hate the game, not the player. Yeah, abs absolutely. All right, thank you so much for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe. And remember until next time that going vegan 
is not the most we can do. It's the least we can do. See you next video. Bye guys.